started. I hope everyone had a great summer. Um, I mentioned in the, the morning halach at, at the minyan we davened at this morning that Hataras Nadarim is a practice that is widely done, but you won't find it in Shulchan Aruch. And the question is why? Why is it not there? What is, what is its origin? And does it not seem somewhat superfluous if we're doing Kol Nidre on the night of Yom Kippur? If Kol Nidre is annulment of vows, then why are we doing Hataras Nadarim on Erev Rosh Hashanah? Make up your mind. Choose one of them, but why do both? Um, and uh, some other very interesting things that we're going to see tonight about uh, Hataras Nadarim that I think are very important because it's, it's widely misunderstood. One of the things that's most misunderstood about Hataras Nadarim is that you'll get people who may not even understand what Hataras Nadarim is all about, so they'll daven it up. Right? In other words, they'll, they'll say it as, a, as, a, as an incantational prayer. And that's meaningless. If it, it's really a, a process of annulment that you're standing before a tribunal to have vows annulled. And if you don't even know what you're saying, you're just davening it up, you have done, you've just you've spent an interesting five minutes uh, saying things, but you haven't accomplished anything halachic or religious in any sense. And I want us to bring that out as well. Um, the Gemara, in the source for Hataras Nedarim in general, the Gemara in Nedarim says, Harotza Shalo Yiskaimu Nedar of Kol Hashana. If a person wants to ensure that his Nedarim uh, do not are not fulfilled for the entire year, Yamod Barosh Hashana Viyomar, Kol Neder Shani Asid Lidor Yehei Batel. Now, this is really just a one-line snippet from a, a longer Gemara that clarifies this a little bit more, but really for our purposes, this is the line that we want to extract. A person wants to make sure that for the coming year, he wants to make sure that in the event that he makes a vow, he doesn't want that vow to have potency of a vow because if a person violates a vow, that's a, that's a serious avera. So he wants to be able to get up at the beginning of the year and sort of nullify in advance any vows that he makes. So he should say this on Rosh, uh, at, uh, on Rosh Hashanah. He should say, any neder that I'm about to take shall become batal. This is the source. And the tour in Hilchos Yom Kippur tells us that this is the source for saying kol nidre on the eve of Yom Kippur. He says, Umotzi Sefer Torah, Hashliach Tzibor. So the Shliach Tzibor takes, he's going through the whole protocol of the night of Yom Kippur. He says, the Shliach Tzibor takes out a Sefer Torah. Va'ochza b'cheiko, va'omer kol nidrei ve'esarei dinadarna v'di ashtabana u'di acharimna. And by the way, this is all in the past tense. All nidorim and other kinds of formulations of commitment or prohibitions that I, we have placed upon ourselves Miyom HaKippurim She'avar Ad Yom HaKippurim Hazeh From last Yom Kippur until today, until this Yom Kippur Shemechavnim lahatir hanedorim v'hacharamos v'hashvuos Ulai avru alehem This, the purpose of this, of this procedure is to annul any vows that we might have taken that we violated Uchedei li natsel min ha'onesh So that we can be saved from any sin for having violated a neder. Now, v'hukshala Rabbeinu Tam. Rabbeinu Tam, the, the, the Tosafist, had a question on this whole process. He says, Ma mo'il lahatir al ma'sha avru kevar v'hinhig. Uh, I'm sorry, kevar, sh'avru kevar, period. Rabbeinu Tam's question at face value doesn't really make any sense. He says, what benefit is it to annul a vow that you've already violated? And, of course, that question doesn't make sense because there is value. If, let's say, I violated a nether, if I can get Hattaras and Durham post facto, then I've alleviated the sin retroactively. So there is benefit to being matir a nether that I've already taken. There's absolutely benefit. So Rabbeinu Tam's question doesn't really make sense. We're going to put that aside for just a moment because there isn't a, the rush explains what Rabbeinu Tam means. We're going to see that quoted in, in a moment. And, but based on the power of his question, Rabbeinu Tam said, "V'hinhig lomar miyom hakipurim zeh 
Ad Yom HaKippurim Haba Aleinu. And because he felt that nullifying past vows is not effective, he therefore changed the Nusach of Kol Nidre to say, Mi Yom Kippurim Zeh Ad Yom HaKippurim Haba Aleinu Litov. Okay? David, which one do we say? We say Haba Aleinu Litov. From... We're annulling future vows, not past, but future. So he says, and therefore he used the future tense conjugation in Aramaic. I'm not an expert on Aramaic conjugation, but I'll take his word for it. The Meforshim discuss whether that's the correct girsa. But Kiomar Shaposhat Zehaminog Mima did not binadarm. And Rabbein Tam further said that this is the correct minog, and it's based on the Gemara that we just quoted from Nedarim. That it's exactly that Gemara. So therefore, there's a machlokus in the Rishon and whether Kol Nidre is an annulment of the past or whether it's an annulment of the future Nedarim that I'm going to take. The Prisha... Uh, quoting other Meforshim is bothered by just one small detail. The Gemara in the Durham said that a person should annul future vows when? Rosh Hashanah. What are we doing waiting 10 days until Yom Kippur? Nine days until Yom Kippur. So he says, Yom Kippur nami mikri Rosh Hashanah, shahu gemar din. That's also called Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Kemo Shekasev Berosh Hashanah Be'osor Lachodesh. There's a Pasuk in Yecheskel that says that the tenth of the month was also the beginning of the year. Hevei Omer Zeyom HaKippurim Kedamrinan Be'erchen Uvishvil So then, but the, Taka, the question is, why do you have to kvetch? Why do you have to do, wait until Yom Kippur? Just do it on Rosh Hashanah or Erev Rosh Hashanah, whenever you're going to do it. He says, Uvishvil should be Yom Kippur miskaps and called Bene Ha'ir Lebeis Hakneses. Lechach on no again, no more be Yom Hakipurim kide lihi not sail min ha'onesh. He says, We wait until Yom Kippur because that's when everybody comes to Shul. Even those who don't come to Shul, the night of Rosh Hashanah will still come to Shul, the night of Yom Kippur, and Arab Yom Kippur, everyone's in Shul. How many of the people who come to Shul for Kol Nidri are going to come to Shul in the morning of Arab Rosh Hashanah? It's not practical. So therefore, wait until the, the maximum number of people will be in shul, and that's when you should do the real hataras nedarim of mikan ulahaba from now onwards. That's the way that the tour understands this gemara based on Rabbeinu Tam. How about the women? The women too. Oh, yeah. The women too. That's when the women are in shul also. Okay. Now, where do we get this minhag to do an additional hataras nedarim on Erev Rosh Hashanah? The earliest source is from the Shalah HaKadosh, who really gives us the entire nusach that we have printed in our Siddur. So I just want to, we're not going to actually read the nusach that's printed in the Siddur, because I assume you have your own Siddur, and you can look up the nusach yourself. So we've skipped that part but I want to see the part that he writes before that nusach and the part that he writes after. It's quite fascinating. So the Shalah writes, Tanan b'maseches nedorim harotza shelo yiskaimu nedorim shel kol hashana yamod b'rosh hashana v'yomar kol hanedorim shani asa lidor b'zu hashana yu b'telem. So first he quotes the Gemara that we just saw. You can nullify future vows on Rosh Hashanah. V'kos ha'vatur ha'chaim s'min tof reishu tes sh'mizen yispash in amin aglomar Kol Nidre Be'er Yom Kippurim. The tour writes that this is the source for the minute to do Kol Nidre. And Upirsha Rabbeinu Tam V'harosh B'nedorim Sham Ki Yom Kippurim Mikri Nami Rosh Hashanah. And they explain that Yom Kippur, like the Prisha quoted, that Yom Kippur is also called Rosh Hashanah. Aval Zrizim Makdimin L'mitzvah. However, says the Shalah, even though it's true that you can do a Hataras Nedarim and count it count as the Rosh Hashanah when you do it Erev Yom Kippur, but if you're a Zariz, you should be Makdim La Mitzvah. You should try to do the Mitzvah as soon as possible. What and there, to, be, to, be, to remove any Nedar that I might take over the coming year, to, to defang any Nedar that I'm going to take. 
You should be able to do it any time of year. But I guess the point is that if... Um, so if you knew you did something wrong or error, so if you're going to do retroactively... Then so to do a Hatoris in the past, you can do any time of the year. But when something but, happens and you realize it, you can just say, okay, I'm going to take I want to know if I like That's for something that you did in the past. Yeah. But what we're discussing now is doing something for the future. Apparently, the Gemara advocates doing this on Rosh Hashanah because you sort of have to get everything in order for the coming year. It's almost like, um, I don't know, uh, in certain businesses, you have to, the beginning of the, of the business year, you have to prepare certain reports for the, for the new year, right? Some things you have to prepare at the end of the year, some things you have to prepare at the beginning of the year. So this is something, because it's mikanu lahaba, to nullify everything for the coming year. You want to do it at the beginning of the year. That's what the Gemara is advocating. So anyway, v'roi lahaktim kodem Rosh Hashanah mamash, and therefore the Shalah says that what's most appropriate is to do Mamish before Rosh Hashanah. On Erev Rosh Hashanah you should do two things. Inyan echad shiyasakein mazik yilkeel that you should rectify what you did wrong in the past which is to annul any past vows that you may have taken. Dahinu hator al ha'avar o im ha'yim achuyu ve'ze nidoi yinaheg ba'atzmo sha'a echat nidoi or, let's say you committed an Avera for which the offense is nidoy, that you should be under a rabbinic ban because you've done something that's offensive to, the, to Chazal. So you should temporarily put yourself under a ban at that moment so that you can fulfill that obligation of being under nidoy. And then you should ask the Chachamim that are standing in front of you Please remove the nidoy that may be upon me, the, the rabbinic ban. Inyan Shani, and by the way, what there are many different, there's nidoy, there's shamta, there's arur, there's many things that we say. I don't, re, I don't remember offhand all of the different categorizations, but it could be something major, an arur, that a, like we had the arurs in this past week's parsha for committing an, an erva, for doing something against the community for being chutzpahdik against the chachamim, all of these things could merit a person some kind of, le- some level of rabbinic ban. In Yenshani, another thing that, so that's the first thing, annul the past. In Yenshani, hu mesiras moda'a alehaba, shekol ma sheit kasher et atzmo mehayom, bishvua o becherem o benidoi vechayot seibazet, that you give a public declaration to the tribunal, that anything that you may get encumbered with over the coming year, from today onwards, either through taking a shvua or some kind of commitment or, or doing something that would earn you a ban if, uh, if you, that's what you accept upon yourself, <laughs> that you are hereby making a declaration that you nullify it in advance. V'kachu aminag be'eretz Yisrael. So therefore, he says, this is the minute. Did you want to ask something? Yeah, very quickly. I mean, so why, so why do we have to do that every year? I mean, surely, if you're only giving the moda about the coming year, so you said from going forward, you only need to give a moda for the coming year, because otherwise you're basically nullifying. If you go back and you say whatever I said during the year, you're basically not... not that's, a, that's a good not question, what Jonathan's asking. Last year, I did a, I did a bittal of everything that I was going to do for the coming year, so what do I have to do, Hataras Nadarm, for anything that I did? So the answer is, is because the Gemara says there are exceptions to the rule. The Gemara says, what happens if I am mevatel all my nedarim that I make at the be- that I'm about to make for the coming year, but at the time that I make a neder, I am cognizant of the bittel that I made, but I say afal pichain, I want this to be a neder. So theoretically, it is possible for a neder to be chal even if you made this you made this uh, advanced declaration. So therefore, the Shalah writes, he says, V'kachu aminag be'eretz Yisrael. Mis'asim be'erev Rosh Hashanah be'bote midrashos, Eida kedosha mitalmidei chachamim v'yirei shamayim. That on Erev Rosh Hashanah in the Bate Medrash, an Eida kedosha, usually the word Eida means a minion. I'm not sure if the, if the Shalah means dafka a minion here or not, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Of talmidei chachamim and yirei shamayim. So already we're in trouble. <laughs> because... You know, it's not always that that's the case. The im'ain penai be'erev Rosh Hashanah mis'asven ben kesele And if you didn't have time on Erev Rosh Hashanah, 
you could always do this between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Va'osin shnei ha'inyanim ha'ila b'zeh ha'ofanu v'zeh ha'nusach b'zeh ha'charzeh omid b'fnei ha'ida ha'kdoisha v'omer b'zeh ha'lashon and he says you should do it in the following, using the following text and I'm, I just have the first line Shimon ha'rabos ha'idayon ha'mumchin kol neder o shvua o iser o konam o cheirem etc. etc. You, you probably know this forwards and backwards in your sleep right? because we do it every year yeah? so this is, what, this is the formula and he goes through the whole thing, and the first part of it is expressing remorse over past vows. And then, if you recall, then the person standing in front of the tribunal says, Vegamani Moser Moda'a, I'm now hereby publicly notifying you that I hereby nullify any future nether that I'm about to take. And so it's exactly the nusach, the way the shalas quotes it, but I don't have it for you in the sheets because you have it in the sitter. Then the Shalah writes as follows. After you make your public declaration, you state as follows. If I have done something for which the punishment is nizifa, which is a type of rabbinic ban, the Gemara in uh, Moi Kutten talks about it, and it mentions that this is a way, it's basically you have to remove yourself, Dalad Amos, from everybody. And it's a machlokis in the Gemara. There's different, the Gemara talks about what was the standard. Is Nazifa seven days? Is it 30 days? How long does it last? What is it for? Gemara seems to imply that Nazifa is something that you get for being a mechutzaf, for being, for being brazen, and for defying rabbinic authority. So if a person, a person should say to them, if I'm liable for nizifa, o oror, or o nidoi, o cherem, o shamta, o klala, based in shalmala, or if I deserve any of these other kinds of rabbinic or bans or, 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 or heavenly bans, bein mipni hashchina, bein mipi ha beistin, sva shalamayla, bein mipi atzmi, bein mipi acherim, bein ba'olam hazeh, u bein ba'olam haba, whether it's be, the God is putting me under a ban, whether it's from the beistin, of the heavenly host, again, these are things that are a little bit lofty, right? Whether it's based on my own words that I deserve to be under a ban, whether it's because of others' pronouncements that I deserve to be put under a ban, whether it's in this world that I deserve to be banned, whether it's in the next world that I deserve to be banned, hareni shav b'seshuva shalema ve'eshev yachaf al ha'aretz kemenude. I hereby do full tshuva, and I hereby will sit barefoot on the, on the earth like someone who's been put into Nidoy. The espalesh ba'afar, I will roll in the dust to show remorse, to show contrition. Boche mitchare tu I am hereby crying and expressing remorse and confessing. Al kol ma'ashe chatasi ve'avisi upashati ve'shimarisi ve'shimaradeti. Miyom he'yosi al ha'adama ad ha'yom hazeh. And I hereby do full tshuva for all of my rebellious activity from the time that I was born until today. I pour out my soul to ask for mechila and kapara and slicha from heaven and from all of God's creatures. And I ask you, wise sages, to please remove any kind of ban or excommunication that I would deserve from, from the time that I deserved it until this day. And then at that point, we don't do this, if you've noticed, you take, off, you take off your shoes, you step away from the tribunal Dalad Amos to show that you're placing yourself in Nidoy. Umit palesh ba'afar, or ba'efer ka'avel, and you roll in the dust like a mourner. Umikabla latzmo nidoy, v'yoshev kimenuda, and you sit for a moment like a person who's been under a, a, a ban. Then 
Then, after you've sat down for that momentary, you know, ban, the tribunal calls you back and they say, Achinu ata, achinu ata, achinu ata. You are our brother, you are our brother, you are our brother. Me'achar shekibalta alecha et adin, because you accept the judgment upon yourself. Az ya'amod meha'aretz, o mitpalel bidma'ot la'ashem itbarach ve'omer. And you stand up, and you pray with tears in your eyes to Hashem, and you say, Yehi ratzon melofanecha Hashem elokeinu velokei avoseinu, shekol haklolos vehaarurin vehaniduyim vehacharamos vehashamato shekilalti o sheirarti o shenadisi o shehecheramti o shesamti yasatzmi, or shashamti yasatzmi maybe, that anything that I have done to deserve to be put under a ban, whether it's from my own words or from otherwise, or if they banned anyone who's banned me or my future des- or my descendants, may it be your will, Hashem, that this should have no effect upon us. And all curses should be converted into blessing. That God has always converted curses made against you into blessings because Hashem loves you. And then afterwards, the, the, uh, the group of sages say to him, etc., etc., and God will convert the, any curses against you into blessings. So the question, the simple question is, what happened? Did we just run out of time? We just, we just did the condensed version of Hatar Sinem. We did everything that the Shalah said in the first part, but this last part, to roll in the dust and to distance ourselves, Dalad Amos, from the Basin, that we don't do. So what happened? So the Shari Tshuva points this out. Um, and he says like this, this is in Shari Tshuva and Simen Tav Kuf Pei Aleph, he states as follows, He says the minog is based on the Shalah HaKadosh, the Rabbim Nimnu Umi Kabolas HaNezifa. He says, but many people omit that last part about accepting a rabbinic ban of distancing yourself and rolling in the dust, that which we call Nezifa. At least that's what I believe that's what the Shari Chuv is referring to. He says, She'ein ba'avonoseinu harabim osam yud shiyu roi lahatir. He says, because in order to alleviate someone from that kind of rabbinic ban, you need ten talmidei chachamim. And we don't have that kind of, it's not easy to gather together ten talmidei chachamim to remove that kind of ban. And therefore a person should not pronounce the ban upon himself because you may not find the right group of people who are going to be able to remove it. And at least you've got to have ten in order to remove it if you are going to do it. And then he says that if you are going to do that last part from the Shalah, make sure you take off your tefillin first, because a person is not allowed to be in a state of nazifa with his tefillin on. Okay, so I'm, I'm uh, suggesting, therefore, it just, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know whether this is obvious or whether it's not so obvious, but it seems that our truncated Hatoras Nadarm that we have in our Siddur is based on the Shari Chuva, that the last part, you're playing with fire, you may not get ten people. Now, I remember in yeshiva days, uh, in Neri Yisrael, they probably still do this, that after Hatoras Nadarm on Erev Rosh Hashanah, we got ten guys together, and then the eleventh guy would stand in front of them and it says, in Nishayavti Nazifa, Hareni... Mevakesh, um, Hatora, something to that effect. I don't remember the exact uh, uh, one-line uh, formula. And then they would say, Mutulach, 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 and then go on to the next guy. It was like literally a 30-second thing that was done to... I remember doing it in Eitzchayim. You do remember doing it? In, in like junior high, yeah. Really? So, so you remember this kind I of... Remember, I, remember, I remember Mutulach, 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 because I wanted to name my first safer that. <laughs> <laughs> Not so, okay. <laughs> Actually, it's a three volume. First one, Mutterlach, Mutterlach, and then Mutter. Okay, anyway. But no, we didn't go on the floor. Anyway, so 
it could be, so that's based on this, uh, on this Shalah and the Shari Chuk. Now the Birkei Yosef tells us, just, just uh, the, the Chida tells us that there's an actual o- other additional benefit to doing Hataras Nedorim on Erev Rosh Hashanah. And it's based on, he says, Yeshno Agim Lasos Hataras Nedorim Be'elul. He says the reason why we do it Erev Rosh Hashanah, or at least this is what, you know, I'm basing, we're basing the minute to do it on, at the end of Elul is because there's a special segula to do Hataras Nedarim in the month of Elul. He says, Vaharemez lo yachel devaro kechol. There's a pasuk in Parshas, beginning of Parshas Matas, which talks about Nedarim. It says that a person shall not profane his words, kechol hayotzimi pivyas, that whatever comes out of his mouth, he must do. So those four words, lo yachel devaro kechol, sofe tevos el. The last letter of each one of those words spells out Elul, Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed. This is from the Shach in his commentary to Parsha Smatas. Okay, let's now read from the Minchas Yitzchak to get clarity on this idea of annulling past and annulling future. And also when we see the Minchas Yitzchak, which is written in the 20th century, we'll also see a reason why there's a concern that we should do Hataras Nadarm in addition to Kol Nidre, that Kol Nidre may be insufficient in some way because of some technical um, deficiencies in the protocol of what we do on the night of Yom Kippur. Let's take a look. See, if we were to do Hataras Nadarm and we go back to the beginning, just Kol Nidre, it would be the same as Who's nullified that if you're... Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to get to, Robert, okay? There doesn't seem to be a tribunal. Yeah. Now, the, what is supposed to happen, what is supposed to happen is that the Chazan is supposed to take the Sefer Torah, and it's brought down in the Machzorim that he's supposed to be flanked on either side by the Chashuvei HaKahal, like the, like the, the Rav or the President yeah. or... And that, that forms a tribunal. In many places, that's talk of the minute. Yes. But there's no personal moda that you're not, you're not personally yeah, that's what testing I was to any of Okay, your, uh, okay. That's what I was but doing. that may not be necessary. For, for, I mean, if anything, remember, what are we saying? Are we, specific, are we specifying the nidarim that we took? Are we, when we, when we uh, get our Taurus nidarim and Erev Rosh Hashanah? No. What we are doing is we're making a moda. We're making a public declaration. So Cyril's point is, there is no public declaration. You're not, no one's speaking to that tribunal. So hold on, hold on. Let's take a look at uh, Rav Weiss and see what he says. He says, remember, remember we read the Rabbeinu Tam in the tour, and we didn't understand. Why does Rabbeinu Tam say that there's no purpose in being mater nadarim of the past? Of course there is. Of course there's tremendous benefits. We don't understand Rabbeinu Tam. He says, Shabo, and by the way, the Beis Yosef discusses this, quoting from the Rush, but we're going to see it quoted from the Minchas Yitzchak. He says, Al Nusach HaKadmonim Shabo Lahatr HaNedor Meshvuos Mishana Sha'avra. He says, Rabbeinu Tam has a problem with this idea of Kol Nidre going on past Nedor. The Kol Nedor in Boi Charota Me'ikara L'Chol HaPachos Faharei Ein Posechin B'Shum Charot. He says, first of all, you know what the problem of being Matar Nedorim when you do kol nidre of past nidarim, he says, the old, how, do, how are you matur a nether? The person has to come before you and express remorse of having taken the nether. There is no expression of remorse. You're just making a declaration that every nether is hereby annulled. Where was the person coming to you first and asking and saying, I regret having taken the nether? That doesn't happen at kol nidre. So that's problem number one. Va'od. Furthermore, you either need one great Talmud Chacham to be Matar and that you've already taken, or you need three non-experts, but they have to be three people. The, all you have is a Chazan with the Sefer Torah. Where, where's their tribunal? Va'od. Halacha k'rav papa d'omer b'perak ha-sholeach tzarech l'farid ha-neder. Va'an lo abdinan hachi. And furthermore, says Rabbeinu Tam, we paskin like Rav Papa that you have to specify what neder you took in order to get a hataras nedarim. And we paskin that way. So how can you get a hataras nedarim without specifying the neder? Va'od. And I'll ask you another question. Deno der atzma u'yefshel lahatir. And 
Question number four is, what about the Shliach Tzibor himself? How is he getting Hatar Asnadar? The person himself can't be Matar his own Nadarim, so where does he get Hatar Asnadarim from? Good questions, huh? So let's, let's review the questions of Rabbeinu Tam. Question number one, he says, there's no Charata. Question number two, you need to have a tribunal. There's no tribunal at Kol Nidre. Question number three, you need to specify what Nidorim you took and you don't have that. And question number four, what's the Shlech Tzibur going to do to, for, his, for his Atar as Nidorim? Those are the four questions of Rabbeinu Tam. Comes along the Rosh, and he says, Uvarosham Kosov Liashev Ha'aras HaRabbeinu Tam Anal. So the Rush, and again, we're just quoting just to save on space. The Rush explains that it's not a problem. He says, He says, number one, it's clear there's charata. Anyone who's coming to shul with their kittel and feeling very contrite, you can be sure that they don't want it to be any outstanding nadar. So it's, it's implicit there does not have to be a verbal expression of charata if the circumstances indicate that the person has charata. That's number one. Uma shehikshe deboin and shlosha hejotos, hare kola kahal omrimoso ish ish levado bilachash. He says, I, what are, you, what are you going to argue? You need a tribunal. Everyone in that shul is part of the tribunal. Because everyone in shul is supposed to be saying the kol nidre together with the shliach tzibor. And therefore, when I am saying kol nidre to myself, I'm not, I'm not being matir my nedr, but everyone around me, I got hundreds of people around me that are being, acting as my tribunal, not just the shliach tzibur. Could also be the kol nidre. Yeah, it's, that's what it's printed in the machsri. You're supposed to say it in an undertone together with the shliach tzibur. V'gam hachaz enomi hakal matirim lo. And that answers the next question, which is, what about the chazan getting hatar sadar? The answer is, the whole tzibur is saying it for him too, to be matur his neder. He says, why is it that Rav Papa says that you have to specify the nedarim that you took in order to get hataras nedarim? Is because Rav Papa was talking about a case where you come before one singular dayan who's a mumcha, and he's going to ask you, tell me about the nedra that you took that you want to get hatar sadarm for. Was it a mitzvah or not? Because you can't, get a, a, you can't be matur nedra if you pledge to do a mitzvah. So that's the reason why. Avol, belel yom ha-kippurim, ein das ha-kol, nedra, al devar mitzvah, ayin sham. But on the night of Yom Kippur, we can assume that people who are coming to get an annulment are not trying to annul a mitzvah that they've done. And therefore, you don't need to specify the nedra. You only, right... And, and that's the reason why it works. That's the reason why it works. Now, comes along Rav Weiss and says as follows. We have accepted Rabbeinu Tam's Nusach. And we say, Chutz mehanusach shehebi ashari tshuva he says, except there are some, quoted by the Shari Tshuva, I remember in Yeshiva, I don't know, do you remember this in Yeshiva, that the Shliach Tzibur used to say both the, from the past and for the future, okay? So, umikol makom kosav de'en loshanos minusach hamurgal, rak hayachid yachol lomar belachash bifnei atzmo. And the Shari Tshuva writes that a person should not change the Nusach that is well accepted already. It's going to be too muzar, too strange. People will get confused. And therefore, only if you want to say it to yourself can you say, Miyom Kippurim Sha'avar Ad Yom Kippurim Hazeh. And then say with everyone else, Miyom Kippurim Zeh Ad Yom Kippurim Haba Aleinu Litova. Omnam lo hevanti, she'im ein omrim kol hakahal bezanus chos, but says Rav Weiss, but I don't understand. If no one else is saying it except you because you are in the know, because you know the Shari Tshuva, then how are people going to know to be matur your nether? No one else is aware that you're even, or uh, that you're asking for this Hattaras Nadarim for the past. 
אבל מכל מקום, הרי מתירים לשעבר כפי המינק של התורס נדרם בערב ראש השנה, כמבור בשלה הקדוש. He says, however, the best thing to do is to be matir nedr for the past, which is the, the minig that we do in HaTorah's Nedarim. And it's a very long tshuva, this min, Minchas Yitzchak. I encourage you to take a look at the rest of it. But his bottom line is, is that there are serious halachic, potential halachic issues that may be involved on re, in relying on kol nidre for HaTorah's Nedarim. One is that if you're looking for a HaTorah for the past, then most seawars don't even say it for the past. And that's why you should do it on Erev Rosh Hashanah. But also there you have the kashas of Rabbeinu Tam. And so even though we've, we've given answers for those, it's always better to be as, as explicit as possible. Yeah. Even though Kulnidre is before Mar, but after Minchik, it's really close to... Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, Cyril. You're, you're working, it's a great question, but you're working under the assumption that Hataras Nadarim can only be done during the daytime. Hold on to your hat, we're going to look at something now. Okay, so I just want to... So the, the purpose of this exercise was at least to understand what the source of Hataras Nadarim is. It's the same source as St. Kulnidre, which is this Gemara Nadarim. And the reason why the, why the Shalah says that it's better to do it on Erev Rosh Hashanah or on Rosh Hashanah, the Shalah's reason was because reason makdim and lemitzvos. The Chida's reason is because it should be done in Elul, because of the special remez, kechol uh, lo yachel devaro kechol, which spells out the, the name Elul. And Rav Weiss and other poskim say, it's not so ay 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 kol nidre. It could be that there are some halachic issues with it. And therefore, best to be as explicit as possible by doing hataras nedorim separately and more explicitly using the shalaz formulation. Question. Yeah. Where we are now is that hataras nedorim is on the past, right? And on the future. In other words, you're... Well, right, the moda'ah, right, right, you're right. Hataras the Dharma is for the past, and the moda'ah is for the future. So, and then the only reason to do it on, again on Yom Kippur is in case you missed it on... Well, the reason for doing it is to do it for the hamon, is to do it really for, because that's when the most people, that's, that's what we saw from the, from the Prisha quoting the earlier Rishonim, is that you wanted... It's not, but, but they're different, they, they, they function in different... In different Kol Nidre, as, as we do it today, is a moda'a on the future, or is a nullification of the future. Is the past and the future. The Shalah says you should do past and future. You should do both of them. The, uh, the Nusach of Kol Nidre is a machlokas, whether it's for the past or for the future. The tour says it's for the past. The, but then he quotes Rabbeinu Tam and says, how does it work for the past? And therefore the Rabbeinu Tam did it for the future. So you have a machlokas rishon. If you're thinking, you're thinking too much like a litvak. You know, it's, right. How could you miss Kol Nidre? <laughs> If they on once again, yeah, I suppose because uh, we uh, Alpi Kabbalah Hoshana Rabbah has significance, but we, I haven't seen that in the Svar. Maybe there's someone who says that I don't know, but we saw that if you didn't do it on Erev Rosh Hashanah, you have Ben Kesele Osar. You have between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. It could be some extended to Hoshana Rabbah too. I just I just don't know. Some people are unable to come to shul. So in those situations, yeah, in those situations, tell you tell a person, don't worry, we'll do hataras nedarim for you. Mutrlach, mutrlach, mutrlach. You bring the three people and you say your matur neder. Now this brings me to the next halacha question about hataras nedarim. Who's who's kosher to do hataras nedarim? What about I got my three sons back from yeshiva? And I want to sit them down and do Hataras Nadar. And I want to waste time in the shul and have to get, there, get a chabura. Can I use my own, can I use relatives for Hataras Nadar? 
Or like Cyril asked, can I do Hataras Nadarim at nighttime? So the Shulchan Aruch addresses the issue of Hataras Nadarim generically and says, and this is in, in Yoridea Hilchos Nadarim Simen Reish Chav Ches, and the Shulchan Aruch says, Ketzad hi ha-hatara, yomar, yomar lo gimel pa'amim mutarlach. You should say three times as a dayan, it is annulled. O shoriloch, o macholoch, or becholoch and shiyomar. The Beis Yosef doesn't matter what language you use as long as it's indicative of the fact that the vow has been annulled or he's been released. Afilu me'umad, and you can do this even standing. You don't have to be seated. Uvikrovim, and you can use relatives for this. Uvalayla, you can do it at nighttime. Uveshabis, and you can even do it on Shabbos. Even if you could have done it the day before. However, if you're going to do it on Shabbos, it should be a, it should be a hatara that was for the purpose of, of, of Shabbos, meaning the neder is directly impacting your observance or your oneg of Shabbos. Shabbos. But if it's a cheyrem on a tzibor that you want to remove, you can even remove that on Shabbos, even if it's not directly related to Shabbos. So the Beis Yosef, in explaining why we are so lenient that normally a tribunal of judges has to be, it can't be related, they have to, all of these qualifications, why over here are we lenient? So he says, He says, that's the maskan of the Gemara, Bisof Perak Nara Maras. It's a it's a Gemara in Adarim Dafai in Zion, which says, the Kamash Mulan Da'afal Gav de Bedin Bo'in on Shiwa Dayanam Yoshvim Velo Shi Vishalo Yu Krovim Vishalo Yadunu Balaila Elabayom. The Gemara in Sanhedrin says that when judges are adjudicating a legal case then they cannot be related, and they have to be seated, and they have to, uh, it has to be during the day, et cetera, et cetera. He says, and, and they can't uh, pre- preside over a case on Shabbos. Hataras Nedora mutter bekulhu delav dinhu. Hataras Nedorim is not the adjudication of a court case. It is a group of three God-fearing Jews who are annulling a person's vow. It doesn't, they are, you're not, you're not real dayanim in the sense of that you're presiding over din, you're presiding over neder, a neder's release, and therefore you can be, they can be related. So you don't have to worry. You know, I remember people saying, oh, you, we can't have two brothers doing on Torah Sadarim. Sure you can. So before, it's Mephorish and Shulchan Aruch. What about a woman? What about a woman? Well, I didn't know you were so forward-thinking, Sim. You're so progressive. You're so liberal. What are you trying to do to our shul? Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. <laughs> okay. Where'd you get your smicha from? <laughs> okay. All right. So let's take a look at the Pischei Tshuva. Let's take a look at the Pischei Tshuva. <laughs> because the Pischei Tshuva asks your question. Simi's asking a very legitimate question. Let's take a look at the Pischei Tshuva. He says, Uvikrovim. He says, Ayin Shekos. He says, Take a look at the Tshuvas Rabbeinu Akiva Eger. Shekos of Nira Dafka Bikrovim, De'ain Hapsul Beguf. He says, Krovim or relatives are fine because they're not intrinsically possible as Dayanim. They could sit on a court case uh, because they're regular kosher Jews, right? Dokshayim Ladun Lacherim, because they're kosher to judge other real court cases. V'chein belayla, um, the davar acher goreim la, da hainu azman. He says, and also that's why you can do it at night because there's nothing intrinsically wrong with the dayanim, just the time is not right. So there's no problem when it comes to ataras nedarim to do it at night. Masha'ein kein benashim, v'hachanami ketanim, ein reuyim la hataras neder. But women and children are not usable for to be matir and neder. Because intrinsically, they're not capable of being dayanim, period. And furthermore, there's a big chumr from the Pischei Tshuva. He says, and I guess he's quoting Rabbi Kiva Eger, he says that what if you have a bar mitzvah boy? This is actually quite common. You come to shul, you want to do Hattoras Nedarim, and you find a bar mitzvah. He had his bar mitzvah last week. 
he hasn't even begun to grow a whisker on his face. He's a, he's a very, very cherubic bar mitzvah boy, okay? And the question is, is he kosher to be, to participate in Hataras Nedorim? Is he, he's, he's uh, chronologically bar mitzvah, but physiologically he's not a gadol yet. So can he be, act as a dayan for Hataras Nedorim? So about, he says, for Dine Mominis, such a child, because it's a suffix whether he was heavy based Cyrus or not, you don't know whether he's physically mature yet or not, you let him prevail, preside over a, 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 a legal monetary case. Avalios Dayone Chalitza Be'emestrichin Bedika, Shehevi Beis Cyrus. But let's say it's an issue of Isser Veheter. Let's say you want a, you need a based him to preside over a Chalitza. If this kid, doesn't shave yet, and you don't know whether he's heavy based Cyrus or not, you actually have to do an exam, a physical exam, to see if the child has any pubic hair yet in order for him to be kosher as a dain and chalitza. He says, and therefore, when it comes to Torah Nedorim, I believe, says the Pisgah Tshuva, that the din would be the same. You have to make sure you examine the kid in order for him to be part of the Hataras Nedarim. And therefore, you should only take people who already you know are shaving. Now, um, another thing that Rabbi Akiva Eger writes, by the way, do we paskin that way? So if you take a look, Rabbi Rabinowitz in his, pis, in his uh, Piske Chuvis quotes from another Sefer. If you take a look, it's the last citation on the last page. It's Ha'ara ha- 104. He quotes from Rav Sternbach, who v'tshuvos v'hanhagos firulei shivat ha-toros nedarim de'er v'rosh Hashanah da'i begadol ben yud gimel shana shekiven she'ena mefarid ha-nedarim ve'ena matr kol ha-nedarim e'ena kedin ha-toros nedarim in ha-toros shetzorach chasim ha-zakan davka ayin sham. Rav Sternbach is meikol. He says, the ha-toros nedarim that we do on Erev Rosh Hashanah is a generic overarching Hattaras Nedarim. It's not spe- specifically for specific Nedarim, and therefore you could be more makel. And therefore we would allow a cherubic 13-year-old to be, participate as a dayan without an exam. Now hold on just one second. Let me just finish the Pischei Tshuva, and then we'll take questions just, just a moment. He then quotes Rabbi Kiva Eger saying further. He says, V'kos av od b'tshuva sham b'mi she'en orotze lefarid haneder machmas kinodar be'esek mischar b'dover seser he talks about the following case. What if a person is embarrassed? He doesn't want to reveal a nedr that he took because it has business ramifications. It really has, it could really, it's like, a, you know, it's privileged information and he doesn't want it to get out to the public. So he says, And so this person that he's, he's willing to reveal it to is still cherubic, and he doesn't have a full beard. He says, there is an Eitzah. He says, You can get four people. You tell the secret of what it is to one of them, which is the cherubic kid. The other three, not all the Dayanim, Rabbi Kivager says, have to know exactly what the nedr was. As long as one of the Dayanim knows, so you reveal it to him, and everyone together says, Mutrlach, 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 and that's your solution. Okay. Yeah. Questions? Just one second. Very quickly, I mean, talking about women, I mean, should women be saying Hatarah? Because according to the Torah, uh, if anything, the husband is supposed to do the Hatarah, the Hatarah. I mean, Pasha Patot, the Torah talks about that the husband is the one who's supposed to do the. The, uh, the, uh, the, the of, the, of those kind of right, but what if? But so what if? Uh, but that's only on the day that she took the nedra, or the day that he discovers that she took the nedra. What if? Right. What if? Beyond Shamo, what if he doesn't know and she doesn't know? So I don't know. I, I actually did not research that particular issue. Because but the question is, though, maybe, maybe the person between Hatarah and his whole family. family is right. Person. Generally, what we tell people to do is that at the beginning of the Hatarah Nedarim, the person standing before the tribunal says, "I'm doing this on behalf of my wife." That's what uh, Rabbi Wagner and uh, Rabbi Karlitz both uh, say that you should do. The wife should tell the husband. The husband should tell the baby right. beforehand. I think we did this in a previous year, in a pre- in a shear in a previous year. We talked about that as well. Okay. Yes. <laughs> If you're going to tell the young, uh, if you're going to be, want something to be more of a, uh, an editor, 
does the basin actually, like if you're going to tell one person which is the true kid, does he have to understand what he is, and he's the only one that's knowing, does he not have to understand what he's being more for the person that's asking? I mean, he has no yeah, comprehension so he's, of what, no, what, what, no, he's, he's a bar mitzvah. He's not, a, he's not an idiot. He happens to be not physically mature yet, but he's capable of understanding what you're telling him. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay. Let's take a look at the Mate Ephraim from Rav Ephraim Zalman Margolios of the 19th century. And this is really an authoritative safer. Everyone should have a Mate Ephraim in their library uh, to be able to reference various halachas of the Yomim Noroim, of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, and even some halachas of Sukkot. And he says as follows, Be'erv Rosh Hashanah Mashkimin B'yoser Umarbim Slichos V'tachnunim. He talks about on Erev Rosh Hashanah what we're supposed to do. We wake up really early. We say a lot of slichos, a lot of supplications, Vamrim Pizanomon, Zachor Bris Avraham, etc., etc., etc. Now, uh, I... Um, um, I, I just I don't want to go through the whole thing because of time concerns, and then he talks about Hataras Nedarim, and um, and uh, he says Umikol Makom Omer Nusachim Avarti Rakidalik Tevas Veishav Yachav Al Haaretz Kimenu Davis Balish Bavur Kevin Shein Osin Kain. Our minig is not to do like the Shalos says to roll in the dust. Okay, Veosam Anogim Lekabel Nezifa Tzrech Lachotz Hatfilin Beishu Hu Benezifa Afshi Hayanoig Tamid Lelech Betfilin. If you're going to accept nazifa upon yourself as part of your hatar sedar, make sure your tefillin is off. Um, and they say kula mechulin. Now, last three lines of the Matei Ephraim, I just want to point out. He says, Velifa amim kedei lemaher she kol hatzibur chosrim chalila omrim shlo sheyachad zug zug. He says, many times what we find in when you have large minyanim, in order to make sure that everyone gets a, gets a, a chilek, we do three people at a time or a group of people at a time, and they all say the formula together in front of the tribunal. I've seen people do this at the bayit as well. Says the Shari Ephraim, Vein Lasos came. Ki im be'esha hasha'a dechuka. You should not do this unless time is very pressing and you, don't, you have no other choice because you've got to run to work. But if you can do it any other way, you should. If you could do it as an individual, you should. And then the, the Mate Ephraim says some people have a minog to do Hatar Sadarim a second time when you can get 10 people before Yom Kippur for the reason that we mentioned before that an Ada is required to remove a Nazifa. Now, what? It, because maybe Kol Nidre, like we said, maybe have halachic issues. Okay. Take a look at the Elef Hamogain, which is the commentary to the Shari Ephraim, to the Mate Ephraim, rather. And he says a number of very important things. Source number 12. Hataras Nedarim Vaosim Bazeb Bezinyanim. He says what you accomplish in Hataras Nedarim is twofold. Aleph Latakein Mashikil Kilu Vahainu Lasos Hatara Al Haavar. To rectify past Nedarim. You're, you're nullifying the future by making a public declaration. And he says, why is this so such an important thing? He says, because besides the str- strong issue that the Torah says you're not allowed to profane your words, Says, he says, quoting the Zohar, that if a person violates his commitments, his, his pledges, his words, this causes his wife and, God forbid, his small children to die. And therefore, every person needs to understand what he's saying. Not like some ignoramuses think that this is something you're supposed to daven up of some kind of supplication. And if therefore you're not fluent in Hebrew, say it in a language you understand, which is why many years I dafka make a point 
that even though I know what the Hebrew means, I want to set an example for the other three if I know that someone in the group is not fluent in Hebrew. And I say, I'm going to say this in English so that I understand what I'm saying. Because if you don't say, if you say it in a language that you don't understand, it's meaningless. And by the way, the Dayanim have to understand it as well. So that's why if they don't understand Hebrew, they should follow along at least in the translation so they know what it means. He says, or it's Lahodia Lahamon Am rather, Shein Bekim Dalinyam. So he says the Dayanim, like the Rabbanim of the city, have to notify the Hamon Am. Listen, Chaver, you need to know four things about Hatoras Nadar. Aleph, Lahodia Lahem Kilo Yoel Hatora Zuki in Benadar Mushmuos Shel Atzmo, Avol Bemashi Hishbio Chavero Ein Moelis Klal Hatora Umoda Azos. A Hatoras Nadar only helps for Nadarim that you took. But if your friend took a nether and said, you're never going to get enough from something that I have, you can't do a Hatar Sadarm and then say, okay, I'm allowed to now. Hatar Sadarm only works for the Dharm that you took, not that someone else took against you. Lo lishaavar velo lashad, it makes no difference whether it's past or future. That's number one. Bays, lo dia lahem, she'inyin mesiras hamoda hazos lo toil, rakish lo yehi zachur hamoda hazos bishas haneder. Jonathan, this goes to your issue. You have to let people know that a modah that you make for future nedarim will only help to nullify if at the time that you make the neder, you don't remember that you made the modah. But if you remember that you made the modah and you say, I don't care about that modah, I'm going to swear anyway. Then, aval im bishas ha neder zachar ha modah v'nodar me oz ve'elach im nodar afim lo nizkar ha tenai modah afal pichay nedar of kayomen. Okay, gimel. Lo hudiya lahem. That you need hataras nedarim not just for formal vows or pledges, but also if you, may, if you have a minhag that you would no longer like to be bound to. So, if you, when you accept it upon yourself a minhag, and you thought you were going to be able to hold by it permanently, even if you only, even if you didn't do it three times, you still need hatar. Now, let's say a person took upon himself to keep chal of Yisrael, and then he realizes, hey, I take one step out of Toronto, and I got problems with dairy. Or let's say, uh, I know a person who took a pledge; they were only going to keep hatar uh, chal of Yisrael, but then this is a woman; she developed a calcium deficiency, and the doctor said you need to have a lot of dairy products. And she was living in a situation where it was very difficult to procure dairy that was chalav Yisrael. So she, she needed to get a hataras nedar. Mm-hmm. If, however, when you accept it upon yourself to do this minute, you said, I'm going to try it out. So then as long as you didn't do it three times, you don't need a hataras nedar. But if you did it three times, even without pledging to accept it permanently, you also need hataras nedarim. Vilachain kol yirei shemaim yia shagur befiv lahasnos al kol davar beli neder bichdei shelo yishar alav keneder. And therefore, any time you accept upon yourself a hanhaga or to do something a new minhag, you should say, "I'm doing this beli neder." You should say that explicitly. V'im nader ezehu davar litzdaka ola acher l'shalmo ki nefesh hamalach hanivra meosu neder hu chovel. He says, and furthermore, if you t- made a pledge to pay someone money or to give something to tzedakah, the angel that's created by that pledge will come back and haunt you if you don't make good on that pledge. That, he, he, that angel is, is hanging in abeyance until you fulfill that pledge. He says, when you make a pledge and you get an aliyah, and the Gabbai says, Bavur she'yitain, because this guy will give, and you say you're going to give something, at the moment that you delay giving it, you're over on bal So that's a pledge. V'izar ha'shatz b'vei sa'kneser sh'lo yomar b'mi sh'verech bavur sh'noder ploni b'n ploni l'tzdaka, rak sh'yomar bavur sh'nosein. You should not say that this person is no der tzedaka, the Gabbai should not say that, but you should say sh'nosein tzedaka. That 
the Tzfar Makdoshim write that a person should never violate a pledge, and that's a serious issue. And finally, number four, Lohodiyah lehem kama dvorim shehen shvuos vehmenam yodim bai dizeh ovrim bevenenshu. There are many things that have the, that have the form of a shvua um, that people aren't aware of. Like if a person says, I'm going to do this, and he doesn't do it, it's, it could potentially be the violation of an edir. Kamo lemashal anishpoim be'emes, shehu shvua, ki shmo shel ha-kadosh baruch hu ha-emes, v'chein anishpoim b'nafsho, v'amar chein nafshi, ich leben, right? Ich leben, by my life, right? I'm going to do this. That's a form of shvua. And ki hu shvua ki ilu nishba b'shem ki ha-nefesh hu chelak elokai mimal, ki mavur b'sfar ma-kadosh, and he goes on and on and on. There are many forms of things that we say we're going to do that have the form of a shvur or a neder. You have to be very careful about them. And that's, uh, that's the commentary of the Alta Magin. So in conclusion, um, we, what we saw tonight were the reason for doing HaTorah Sadarim Erev Rosh Hashanah in addition to uh, Kol Nidre. We saw that Kol Nidre may have some halachic problems even though it's, it's catered to the masses. But a person who's meticulous should do HaTorah Sadarim on Erev Rosh Hashanah. And we saw some of the halachic issues about judges, about women, about children, about doing it in bulk, which the Mate Ephraim says a person should avoid doing it unless it's an emergency. Okay, any other questions or comments? Does, uh, does saying the Vinayadra negate three times doing it also? I think it does. I think it does. Um, but I'm not sure. I mean, if someone takes on, I mean, uh, you know, the season for taking things on, people, you know, so, you know, then you really get into trouble. But most people take them on as, as a blineder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, you should be, so yeah. even, so therefore when you accept it upon yourself, blineder, you're, you're acknowledging that no matter how many times I do this, I don't want this to be betoras neder. Yeah, that's, that's my understanding. Yes? I'm changing a minute how if you go from Nusak Svart to Nusak Ashkenazi, you move to a different show. It's around. not clear whether you're permitted to do that just because you've changed shul. So it's something we should discuss in another shir. When I wonder what conditions do you change nusa chatzila? Okay. Be so matur neder. She was about shul. She did nega basa. You know, and we need to bed. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, wasn't convenient anymore. So it was not good.